Good morning and welcome to Sunday Agenda. I'm Helen Daly. This week saw the Australian government in a diplomatic standoff with China. In the middle, Rio Tinto mining executive Stern Hu detained by the Chinese and facing grave allegations of espionage. One of our guests today tells his own horror story about doing business in China. Another reminder that it's not always plain sailing for Western companies over there. In China, the way that uh, they, as in the, the, the powers that be, the people behind the scenes do these things, is they make your, your life, your business, um, uncomfortable to the point of almost impossible and hope that you'll just take yourself away as opposed to they actually have to step up to the plate and, and tell you to leave. That's author Mark Kito, his remarkable story a little later in the program. But first, new figures this week showed that homelessness in most of our cities is up by as much as a third, with the increase underway even before our current economic crisis. It's an uncomfortable truth for the Rudd Labor government, which promised to tackle homelessness and which a year ago announced a deal with the states to do just that. Critics say it's not enough and it's all too slow. Claims strongly denied by Housing Minister Tanya Plibersek on Agenda This Week has been uh, action, there has been activity right around the country doing terrific things, building new accommodation but also offering the support services that people need to stay housed, to prevent homelessness and to stay housed. What, what do you say then to Claire Martin, the head of ACOS, former chief, Labor Chief Minister of the Northern Territory, when she says the government built up expectations but has let people down on this issue. Oh, I think Claire should have checked the details before she spoke publicly about it. But Claire Martin isn't the only voice of dissent. Other agencies and the federal opposition are expressing concern as well. In the studio with me this morning to discuss this is the Shadow Housing Minister, Scott Morrison. Scott Morrison, thanks for joining us on Sunday Agenda. Thanks, Helen. Now, isn't this latest counting the homeless report, really doesn't it show that both sides of politics are failing homeless people? There's been an increase of 17% mm. in homeless families. Mm. Now, that has happened between 2001 and 2000. 2006, mm. that mm. was on your side's watch. True, true. And in that same period, the biggest single component of homelessness by age group is actually with people aged 12 to 18. Now, during that period, we had a 16% reduction in, in that demographic. But look, I think this issue is a lot like the challenges we face in Indigenous Australia. It's an intractable problem. And I don't think Does either side. Does that mean you can never win? We no, can I never get rid of this problem? I, I think you have to work hard at it. But I mean, the causes of it are very complex. It's just not a, a factor of economics, it's a factor of issues from mental health through to domestic violence to substance abuse there are a range of issues here and uh, you know you've got to come at it at all fronts it's just not a bricks and mortar issue which I think what the government is, is trying to get across yeah but I mean you've said the opposition takes this challenge of homelessness incredibly seriously yes. but should the coalition have done more and I don't want to sort of backtrack over history too much but should you have done more given that this report is specifically about the period when mm. your side was uh, in government between 01 and 06 when homelessness was increasing, particularly of families. Yeah, I think, look, I think one of the most disturbing figures that came out of that report was the increase for families, and particularly children under, under the age of 12. So while we're making good headway for, for, for young people aged 12 to 18, um, families was on the rise. And uh, this was during a period of prosperity as well. And I think that just underscores the point that this isn't so much about economics as it is about social problems and things like family breakdown. That was the, the, the major cause of uh, homelessness, particularly for young people. So, look, it's, it's a bit how long is a piece of string with how much you can do on this, but we've given the government total support on more than $3.5 billion worth of programs since they've come into government. And so this past week we were disappointed that the, the announcement they made twice actually last year um, with so much fanfare with the states, $800 million, $400 from the Commonwealth, $400 from the states, hadn't been signed up as they promised it would by the 31st of March. Yes, now Tanya Plibersek during the week on agenda said very strongly refuted that. Yeah. But as far as you're concerned, this this working out these plans with the states, which mm. are, you know, essentially Labor states, mm. um, is that something that really needs to go forward? The minister said that mm. some of the initiatives that they've done mm. have been put in place without those plans. They've already moved mm. on well, some that, of these that's issues. True. That's true. The white paper had a range of initiatives, of which the agreement with the states, the $800 million agreement with the states, was a very, very big component. It was the big rock in the jar, if you like. Um, but what the states haven't been able to do is come to the table and the federal minister hasn't been able to bring all the states to the table, particularly New South Wales, which accounts for 
example, one quarter of homeless people around the country. Do you think that's a big failing on the I, federal I, government's I, part? I do, particularly as they, they were so quick to say we need swift and decisive action on this. Well, it was a big election platform, It was a wasn't massive it? election platform, and I think what we're seeing across a raft of issues now, whether it's school halls or this, is the big announcement comes and the follow-through doesn't come. Now, the minister said on, on, on Sky Agenda uh, earlier in the week, last week, that uh, you know this wasn't the agreement. But the agreement makes it crystal clear. She said um, Claire Martin should check her facts. Well, the agreement says by 31st of March 2009, all implementation plans must be agreed. Now, in, we're in July, and we still have New South Wales in particular, as well as the territories, outstanding. All right. Is it slowing down the initiatives to get homeless people into some sort of accommodation? I mean, clearly there has mm. been some progress on getting teenage homelessness mm. down, mm. so that's great news. But mm. has this sort of, I guess, a standoff between the states and the feds slowed down getting homeless people into accommodation? Well, it's we're stopping the flow of resources, particularly to a big state like New South Wales. The money doesn't flow until these agreements are in place. And the, the, the important thing about this agreement is, is it's dealing with a lot of the social issues. It's not, there's already a social housing program, which we supported, and that was the, the $800 million with the states. That was another agreement. We supported that agreement. We haven't supported the stimulus package, but we have supported that agreement. Uh, but this package with the states on homelessness was all about delivering social programs. And uh, it, it got strong support from us, and it hasn't received obviously strong support from the states and the minister hasn't been able to bring them to the table. Is it a national disgrace that those people aged over 65, there's been a 23% increase mm. in their homelessness. Now, do you take some responsibility for that as well, or your side of politics? Well, I think as a community, we have to take responsibility for these challenges. I mean, when we look at the causes of these things, and whether it's family breakdown, or whether it's mental health, or whether it's a whole raft of causes to these problems, I think together we have to take responsibility for how we go and, and fix this in our community. Is it money that just, you throw money at it and it uh, is solved, no. or are there, do we need to be more creative? Oh, well, no, I don't think it's just money. I mean, a lot of the programs we introduced when we were in government were things like the Reconnect program, which helped young people get back into their families. We introduced the Mentors program, which the minister referred to, uh, which was trying to connect people to employment and other life opportunities. I mean, people who are suffering homelessness have usually suffered some sort of dramatic life event, and it's all about trying to get some stability back into their lives, and they need help to do that. And that's what this package with the states was all about. And of course, unemployment if it rises or as it rises it's going to be exacerbating the homelessness problem isn't it? Well I think that is a major when I first became shadow minister I sat down with the homelessness council and the point I made at that time was with the economic crisis um, what we uh, faced was more people becoming economically homeless adding to the burden of resources that were there for those who were socially homeless. On the issue of uh, a completely separate mm. issue, the Rio Executive Stern Hu, who's been detained in China. Now, Trade Minister Simon Crean has, uh, is demanding that the Chinese government deal with this very quickly. He's in Shanghai at the mm. moment. They, he is also saying that um, you know, they have to produce the evidence. Now, you've been, your side's been calling for mm. the government to do a lot more. Mm. What more can they do? Well, look. The Prime Minister likes to talk about swift and decisive action. Now, you, you couldn't claim that he's had swift and decisive action on this issue for days it went past before even the approach was made. Simon Crean has met with a well, very, that's not very, strictly true, is a very it? low the ranking official. Because Foreign Minister official. was, and, and consular officials were trying to get through the Prime almost Minister, from the beginning. The Prime Minister has portrayed his relationship with China as a special one, and his, his ability to work things over in China is significant. That was a major um, position he took before the election. And on this occasion, he's been missing in action. So you think he personally should still step in? Oh, look, if it was if it was a fa family member of mine, a constituent member of mine, I, I would be on his uh, on his phone every day, uh, trying to get the prime minister to use the the relationships he has, which he says he has, for the benefit of an Australian citizen. Now that's his job. All right. Perhaps more generally, mm. is this episode going to damage uh, the way Australia does business? Will it change the way Australian businesses have to look at the potential risks of doing business in China? Well, look, I think Australian businesses have already understood the risks, I think, for a long well, time. Well, this just underlines it, doesn't well, I it? Well, I think it does, and I think the, you know, the, the, the person you'll be speaking to in a moment, uh, uh, I think, underlines that point as well. I mean, it, is, it isn't like doing business in Australia. It's a very different system, and when I was in the tourism industry, I used to be up there fairly frequently, and it is a, a very different way of, uh, of things operating. I think most businesses understand that, but when things do go wrong, 
I think you expect your government to stand up for you and to make sure that the rights that you enjoy in Australia aren't thrown away when you're in another country. And that's really the job of our Prime Minister and it's the job of our government. And Simon Crean meeting with a low-ranking official in, in the Shanghai administration, frankly, doesn't cut it. No, but in terms of the way business will have to operate, they, will, they might have to change their modus operandi? Well, look, that's, I think that's something for them, and I think they'll be looking at circumstances such as this and be looking at the way they do things in China. But I do think there is a high level of awareness. Just yesterday I was chatting to some people in my own electorate who do a lot of business in China, and they're very familiar with the risks. On a matter internally in mm. the opposition, now your name has been talked about as one being mm. on the way up mm. if and when Malcolm Turnbull has his planned reshuffle. Do mm. you think you will be a winner out of any changes? Oh, look, look, that's a matter for Malcolm. I remember when you know, this speculation goes on all the time. Last time I think it was asked by Kieran, I said, I'm happy to take out the bins. The office still stands. <laughs> I'm not sure that that's true. You're being far too humble. But do you expect to do well out of any changes? Look, these are matters for the leader. Um, and, uh, you know, Malcolm Turnbull has our full support. I mean, he's doing a great job and wish him well. All right. Scott Morrison, we appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Thanks, Helen. And you're watching Sunday Agenda. Our next guest is author Mark Kitto, and we're talking to him after this short break. <laughs>